Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk to you about manipulation through the media. First off, I assume most of you were right now, just like most of you right now, on your phones. Probably a few minutes ago, while this talk started, you were looking through traffic or different stuff, but always looking at your phone. Why is this? Well, true this, we are technology's toys. They play with us. They control us every time. They tell us what to do. So I wanted to start with a quick experiment. I wanted to ask you, how many hours do you think did you look on the daily basis a screen? Take into account this can be any type of screen. Your cell phone, your tablet, your iPad, your computer, work at home. How many hours do you think did you spend? So let's say from zero to two hours. Raise your hands. No cavemen in this room. That's great. Now let's say from two to four hours in one day, right? Four to six hours, six to eight hours, eight to 10 hours, 10 to 12 hours. <laughs> all right, we're gonna need a psychiatrist for this guy. <laughs> well, the truth is we all need psychiatrists. On the average, people spend around 11 hours looking at a screen. Half of your day looking at a screen. Take this into account, half of your day. You think about it, half of your day means half of your week, half of your month. And in the long run, this will be half of your life looking at a screen. However, how much of this time is actually effective? How much of this time is productive? Is it helping you in any way? How many times has it happened to you that you're doing something productive and then you end up looking at something completely different? Just last week, I was looking at the cardiovascular system for my sports science class. And out of nowhere, I ended up just watching how cats climbed up trees in less than two seconds with a laser tag. Right, nothing to do with it. And I'm sure it's happened to you many times as well. We feed from technology. It is our anesthesia, our distraction. Every time that we feel bored, just take your phones out. I'm sure most of you were doing it before. You go to a medical appointment, you're just waiting in the queue. Just take out my phone. I feel uncomfortable, I take out my phone. People start reading the headlines and all this information, but how much of it is really being productive? This guy is called Noam Chomsky. He's the one who developed a theory about manipulation through the media. He's the one that established it. There is something beyond that is controlling society. He decided that if you control the media, you control the people. That's his big theory. Control the media, control the people, control how they behave. You control what they can see, what they cannot see, what they are going to view, how they are going to react to certain situations and events that will occur. If you can control that sort of stuff, you can control how they think, how they act, and you can control the behavior of society. So, what is an example of this? I assume most of you in here know Superman, right? He's the perfect guy, the guy who's fearless, who's selfish, who acts as a hero. He's a symbol of power, of just strength and courage. He's not scared to take the important decisions to step up and sacrifice himself for others. He's the type of guy that you would like to go to war with is a type of guy who will protect you, and you know it. Now, we have El Chapulín Colorado, famous Mexican character created by Chespirito. He's not anything like Superman, if you see it. He's not tall, he's not handsome, he's not young or strong. He's just like an average human being. This being said, this is a contrast, right? Chespirito was trying to create a contrast and a reality, show that you're not going to be the hero that Superman represents. Don't believe everything that they tell you. Just because you go to the movies and you think you're just having a good time with your friends doesn't mean that ideas are not getting into your head. What happened after Superman was released? People started going more to war. They started to believe in the idea that you could sacrifice yourself, that you could be the type of hero like Superman is. What did just to do? Create the contrast and say, no, sir. This is not every time. This is not what people should believe. They should know that they can also be an average guy, that this is not the truth. Noam Chomsky decided to divide society into two categories, the highly intellectuals, 
and the bewildered herd. The highly intellectuals are the small, the small percentage of society, the ones who control the rest. They take the important decisions, the matters. They are the ones who control the media. The bewildered herd are the ones that are distracted, are the ones that are being innocent to the manipulation. The highly intellectuals, they decide to control the media. They decide what they can see. They decide to keep them distracted by creating things like series, TV shows, newspapers, fake news, all these different mediums to show people what they can believe and what they cannot believe. But every time you fall for it, every time people believe these things, because if you control the media, you control the people. Now, this is not only an American perspective, as you may believe. Famous Colombian author William Ospina has also a particular thought, because this is not only about showing people what they can believe, but also about keeping the information from them. If you do not tell them the truth or the whole side of the story, they're going to believe that everything is fine. This is his big criticism, that in this country, in Colombia, there's a lot of information that is being omitted through the media, and the people are not knowing the truth, setting them to believe in things that are not true. Things like La Toma del Palacio de Justicia, very hard information to find as he establishes. No proper medium or documentary that says exactly what happened. Keeping the truth from people is also making them believe in certain ideas. So, propaganda is to a democracy what a bludgeon is to a totalitarian society. What does this mean? People want to be in power. You want to keep control of society. Once you're in that position of power, you just want to stay in there. You want to control the people. So what is the difference between hitting a people with a bludgeon and throwing headlines and titles at them, telling them what to believe through the media by using movies and series, providing certain type of ideologies, and putting sometimes even criminals as war heroes, changing your whole perspective. How is this different? They are controlling society. The only difference is, in one, you can actually see it physically hitting them. But this, they are unconscious to the fact that they are being manipulated. That's why it's so effective. You think you're just going to the movies with your friends, watching Superman. You end up believing the ideas that you can also be a hero like Superman and go to war. Don't believe it. The truth is, we are the media's puppets. They control us. Their perspectives, their ideologies, they're all within us. All the times that you're reading the newspapers and the news, the headlines, they are shaping the way that you think. And you know it. Sometimes you just want to be innocent to the fact that it is actually happening. So what do I want to say with this? Don't believe everything that you think, that you see. Don't believe everything that the media tells you. Don't think I'm right. Take one story. Look at it from two different mediums. Analyze what they have in common, the things that they have in different. What is one media keeping? What is the other one uh, keeping focus on? How are they keeping the story from you and how are they shaping your reality? Don't let yourself be fooled by the media. Thank you very much.